In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins to God our Father, asking him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. I said, I will confess my transgression unto the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil and failed to do what is good. For this I deserve your punishment, both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins, and trusting in my Savior, Jesus Christ, I pray. Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. God, our Heavenly Father, has been merciful to us and has given his only Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Glory be to God on high.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, the strength of all who trust in you, mercifully accept our prayers. And because through the weakness of our mortal nature, we can do no good thing, grant us your grace to keep your commandments, that we may please you in both will and deed. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The first lesson for the first Sunday after Trinity is written in the first book of Moses, known as Genesis, chapter 15. After this, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield, your very great reward. But Abram said, O sovereign Lord, what can you give me since I remain childless, and the one who will inherit my estate is Eliezer of Damascus? And Abram said, You have given me no children, so a servant in my household will be my heir. Then the word of the Lord came to him. This man will not be your heir, but a son coming from your own body will be your heir. He took him outside and said, Look up at the heavens and count the stars, if indeed you can count them. Then he said to him, So shall your offspring be. Abram believed the Lord and he credited it to him as righteousness. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. to the Lord, you righteous. It is fitting for the upright to praise him. For the word of the Lord is right and true. By the word of the Lord were the heavens made their starry host by the breath of his mouth. the plans of the nations. He thwarts the purposes of the peoples. The Lord loves righteousness and justice. The earth is full of his unfailing love. To the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the The second lesson is written in the first letter of St. John, chapter 4. 
And so we know and rely on the love God has for us. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in him. In this way, love is made complete among us so that we will have confidence on the day of judgment. Because in this world we are like him. There is no fear in love. But perfect love drives out fear because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. We love because he first loved us. If anyone says, I love God, yet hates his brother, he is a liar. For anyone who does not love his brother whom he has seen cannot love God whom he has not seen. And he has given us this command. Whoever loves God must also love his brother. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. O Lord my God, in you do I take refuge. Save me from all my pursuers and deliver me. Alleluia, Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 16th chapter. Glory be to you, o Lord. There was a rich man who dressed in purple and fine linen and lived in luxury every day. At his gate was laid a beggar named Lazarus, covered with sores and longing to eat what fell from the rich man's table. Even the dogs came and licked his sores. The time came when the beggar died and the angels carried him to Abraham's side. The rich man also died and was buried. In hell where he was in torment, he looked up and saw Abraham far away with Lazarus by his side. So he called to him, Father Abraham, have pity on me and send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue because I am in agony in this flame. But Abraham replied, Son, remember that in your lifetime you received your good things, while Lazarus received bad things. But now he is comforted here, and you are in agony. And besides all this, between us and you a great chasm has been fixed, so that those who want to go from, you, from here to you cannot, nor can anyone cross over from there to us. He answered, Then I beg you, Father, send Lazarus to my father's house. For I have five brothers. Let him warn them, so that they will not also come to this place of torment. Abraham replied, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them listen to them. No, Father Abraham, he said, but if someone from the dead goes to them, they will repent. He said to them, If they do not listen to Moses and the prophets, They will not be convinced even if someone rises from the dead. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ.
Grace and peace to you from God the Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. In the Gospel for today, Jesus introduces us to two men, both of whom are about to die. We don't really know how each of the men died or whether either of them saw it coming. However, one of them was probably more of a surprise than the other. For the other of them had been sickly, had sores covering his body. He was hungry. While the other one feasted every day. If you or I, though, were to meet these two men under different circumstances, I suspect that you would like one of them more than the other. You would want to be with one of them more than the other. You would want to be like one of them more than the other. And still, even after they died, you can probably guess that one of them would be a name that you would remember longer. Think for a minute, whose funeral, the rich man or poor Lazarus, Whose funeral would be better attended? Whose obituary longer? Whose grave covered with flowers? At whose funeral are people, a line of people perhaps, more likely to stand up and say, he was a good man, whether he was or not? Or they might stand up and use flowery language and they'll say things like, with pious words like, he's in a better place, whether he is or not. They might even say something about, about righteous like Father Abraham or something about angels or the blessings that he had in life. The rich man who feasted every day or the poor man who laid there at the gate with dogs licking his sores. Let's be honest. Viewed from this side of the grave, which of these two men would you rather be? Our answer reveals our heart, does it not? Could this not be a warning to us? You see, later in the story, we hear that this man had five brothers. Five brothers who appear to be living their lives in much the same way as their brother and headed in the same direction. But it couldn't it be said that this rich man has, has many more than five brothers. There are many more who follow in his way, and truth be told, they want to be like him. Of course, they don't know where the path of it they're on will eventually lead. They don't know just how terrible it will be, what agony and torment lies ahead. Maybe if they only knew. If they only knew what was in store, they would repent, they would turn and change their ways. But it's not as if they didn't have the opportunity. They, too, have the books of Moses and the prophets they have the scriptures. They have the law of God. They have the clear testimony of God towards those who break the law. The law of God is clear. Love the Lord your God with all your heart. Love your neighbor as yourself. But as St. John pointed out to us this morning, how, how can anyone claim to love God whom he has not seen, when you do not love those whom you have seen. The people you've seen every day because they're right outside your gate, they're, they're, they're laying there, they're your closest neighbors. These are the ones who are in need of your care beyond, above everyone else. It's your family, your colleagues, your friends. About what you are to do towards those, Abraham says, you have Moses and the prophets. Listen to them. Do you likewise know the horrors, the agony, and the torment, the fire that the scriptures promise to those who do not repent and believe? 
Or, or would you wait, wait for someone to rise from the dead to convince you that you really don't want to be like the rich man? My dear friends, repent. Repent of your lovelessness to God and to neighbor. Repent of your desire for every good thing here in this life. Repent of your refusal to bear the cross and suffer, or even to be mildly inconvenienced for what truly is good. Repent of your unwillingness to hear the words of Scripture because you don't think it makes any difference, because, frankly, you think it's boring. Repent. And rejoice. Rejoice that God has sent someone down from heaven to call you to repentance. Of course, the one that he sends is not Lazarus. Rather, it is someone who appears more lowly than Lazarus. Someone who comes and lays there as a, comes as a beggar with nowhere to lay his head but perhaps a manger. Someone who hurst, thir- hungered and thirsted for righteousness but would not make bread from stones. Someone who in his suffering was ridiculed by the rich and the righteous and surrounded by dogs who barked their hatred toward him. That one who calls you to repent is not an angel. Though angels were commanded concerning him, and when he finally commits his spirit into the hands of God, no doubt the angels came and ministered to him too. The one who calls you is not Abraham. Rather, it's one who is more righteous than Abraham, one whose righteousness is actually credited to Abraham by faith. The one who calls you is not merely someone who has seen hell off in a distance and comes to warn you. No, no, it's the one who has gone into the very depths of hell, who has crossed that chasm. And there suffered the agony that your sin, your depravity, deserved. It's not Lazarus. Although you could call him Lazarus because that name means God is my help. We would probably call him Jesus. For that means the Lord saves. And this one who came down from heaven to call you to repent still calls you. And still, even today, not just later, calls to your relatives too. And says, you have Moses and the prophets. Listen to them. See, Jesus could come. He could come down and and stand in front of you, risen from the dead, and call you to repent, to warn you. but what he has done is is better instead. He's given you his Holy Spirit. And he's done that precisely so that you would repent and believe. He's given his Holy Spirit so that you would hear his word, and in his word, that you would come to know this Jesus. That we would see in this Jesus, even when he's brought lower than Lazarus, when he's lifted up on a cross, to see there in our relationship to Christ, our exaltation, our being lifted up, and our righteousness. That in him we would find our constant daily nourishment. Not in what falls from the tables of the rich. No, we know how fleeting that is but we will find our nourishment in what God himself gives us at his table, especially when we take our place and receive there our Lord Jesus' own body and blood. That we would bear our crosses willingly and joyfully, not because they're pleasant, 
but because we bear them alongside Jesus. And because, as Jesus says, it is through these tribulations that we enter the kingdom of heaven. And he's given us his Holy Spirit so that even, even in our final hours, that in our last moments he may befriend us, And as homeward we journey, attend us, that even in those times, he would leave us not alone, not alone to face the accusing foe all by ourselves, but to stand by our side all the way, along the way to the end. And when the end comes, to know that angels await ready to carry us home. And even when we have died, that our name, like Lazarus, Lazarus is the name that is remembered, the rich man has no name, but that even when we have died, our name, like his, is the one that will be remembered. And that it will be remembered not because of what you have done, not of how great you are, how of our worldly fame or our position in life, but that our name too, like his, would be remembered. We would be remembered by name because God has named us in holy baptism, named us one of his own. God is my help. So Jesus introduces us to two men in today's gospel, both of whom, like us, will die. Jesus tells us this story so that we might know and learn from him. That by his spirit we may find in him our Lazarus. That God is our help. So that we might listen to Moses and the prophets and all the scriptures and there find him as our comfort and consolation, our righteousness and our help. And to learn that Jesus goes even into hell and back for us to rescue us. So that when our last hour comes, he and his holy angels will deliver us from this world of sorrow to himself in heaven. Amen. Please stand. The peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We join in confessing the Christian faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God.
Let us pray for the whole Church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. God, our Father in heaven, look with mercy on us, your needy children on earth, and grant us grace that your holy name would be hallowed by us and all the world through the pure and pure and true teaching of your word and the fervent love shown in forth in our lives. Graciously turn from us all false doctrine and evil living, whereby your precious name is blasphemed and profaned. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. May your kingdom come to us and expand. Bring all transgressors and those who are blinded and bound by the devil's kingdom to know Jesus Christ, your Son, by faith, that the number of Christians may be increased. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Strengthen us by your Spirit according to your will, both in life and in death, in the midst of both good and evil things, that our own wills may be crucified daily and sacrificed to your good and gracious will. Into your merciful hands we commend all who are in need, praying for them at all times. Thy will be done. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Grant us our daily bread, preserve us from greed and selfish cares, and help us trust in you to provide for all our needs. Lord, in your mercy, Forgive us our sins as we also forgive those who sin against us, that our hearts may be at peace and may rejoice in a good conscience before you, that no sin may ever frighten or alarm us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lead us not into temptation, O Lord, but help us by your Spirit to subdue our flesh, to turn from the world and its ways, and to overcome the devil and with all his wiles. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And lastly, O Heavenly Father, deliver us from all evil of both body and soul, now and forever. Lord, in your mercy, hear us. We trust, O Lord, in your great mercy to hear and answer us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good and right that we should at all times and in all places give you thanks, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Everlasting God. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, with all the saints on earth and hosts of heaven, we praise your holy name and join their glorious song. Almighty and most merciful Father, send down upon us the grace of your Holy Spirit, and through your Holy Word be pleased to bless and sanctify these your gifts of bread and wine, that they may be the body and blood of your most dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup 
after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, O Lord, according to his institution, we, your servants, celebrate here before your divine majesty. With these, your holy gifts, the commemoration your Son has willed us to make. Remembering his blessed passion, mighty resurrection, and glorious ascension, we give you most hearty thanks for the innumerable benefits he has secured for us. And we humbly ask you to grant that by his merits and death and through faith in his blood, we and your whole church may receive forgiveness of sins and all other benefits of his passion. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Taught by our Lord and trusting his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy endures forever. We give thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us with this Holy Supper. We pray that through it you will strengthen our faith in you and increase our love for one another. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen.